Okay, it is um, time to start. I welcome Eric, who will present a joint work of um, two institutions, the University of Leipzig and uh, the institution where I belong to. And um, he will say something about the FCS and um, how to query lexical resources with it. Yep. So, hello. Uh, I'm Eric Hörner and I will present this joint work. And this is an extension proposal for the Clarin FCS done in our German Text Plus project. Um, a quick outline of the things to come. Um, we first start with a short back, uh, background yeah, slides about the Text Plus project and how lexical resources uh, go into this. Then the federated content search infrastructure then how we will extend this for lexical resources, and then what is to come after this. Um, the yeah, Text Plus project is a research data consortium um, focused on language and text data. It's part of Germany's national research data infrastructure, the NFDI. And the NFDI and Text Plus goals are to make research um, available for scientific use and support interlinkage as well as long-term preservation. And NFDI is an interdisciplinary network of data and services based on common standards and especially FAIR principles. And this is between different consortia covering different um, research areas. So Text Plus, um, the project is split into three data domains, collections, lexical resources where I am part of, and editions. They have different foci. And all the um, data domains have um, some common measures like findability, accessibility, community activities. And this results in joint working groups where some things that are common between these data domains are being worked on together. And yeah, for text plus and for this presentation, the measure ions findability is important. Um, because, uh, yeah, lexical resources, uh, many of the, yeah, of the large German um, data providers um, are part of this project. And so they provide a lot of different resource types like dictionaries, encyclopedias, normative data like the GND, terminology databases, ontologies, word nets, and so on. So we have a wide and yeah, diverse spread of formats. The lexical resources are also uh, split in thematic clusters like uh, German dictionaries in the European context, born digital lexical resources, which are, for example, uh, online dictionaries, or also non-Latin scripts and unresourced languages. Because of those resources, we have a wide and diverse spread of formats with also custom search options and technologies. So we have generic and customized XML formats with TI. We have legacy XML because XML is all this time. We have table-like serializations for lemma lists, for frequency informations. We have some custom proprietary formats. We have also geographic information encoded in images of maps, for example, or we have different character sets for some non-Latin uh, um, languages. And this poses challenges due to the heterogeneity for some unified representation that is required if we want to search and retrieve results over all those resources. That's why um, one goal of the lexical resources data domain is to provide some decentralized um, dictionary platform. And for this, we chose some federated approach. This is, as said before, um, due to the heterogeneous nature of resources, there are a lot of formats, there are different levels of annotation, as well as technical architectures in the back. And there is work being done, or there was work being done before with the client federal content search that we are using as a base where we yeah, build up on. Um, the client federal content search, is also, also Clarion is also an EU project, 
and it provides a framework for accessing specially distributed text corpora. And it is, yeah, it's a common specification for how the interfaces have to work, what data formats are being used, and the query languages. Um, yeah. There are naturally other resources how to link and organize lexical resources. For example, there are some organizational restricted approaches like the Wörterbuchnetz by Tria, which collects a lot of smaller uh, dialectical and historical resources. There's a global Wordnet association. There are also uh, a lot of initiative for common research infrastructures like Clarin or Daria. Also, Alexis, was, which was presented in the other room before. There are a lot of standardized formats like TI, the text encoding initiative. There are refinements to TI done by Daria and Alexis. There are RDF formats like Ontolex. And there are also collaborative and non exclusively uh, academic dictionaries like Victionary, where everyone can, contribu uh, can contribute, or DBpedia. So why then the federated content search? It has two yeah, advantages. Uh, one on the side of the endpoints, the data providers, and one on the end user side. For the endpoints, one major point is that they still are in full control of the resources they offer. If there are yeah, changes due to copyright licensing or data, protection reasons, they can remove the data, they can add new data, but they can control what they expose. They also have knowledge about the data, like how it's structured, what formats are being used, so they know how to search those, and also how to best rank results if there's some query being done. And if you have some central platform, sometimes ranking or searching is not that easy. As well as visibility, um, especially for smaller and uh, more uh, not that commonly known uh, resources, it's better to be in some yeah, larger uh, yeah, registry of resources. So if there's some search being done, it's included and maybe then you're also surprised where results are coming from. And the advantages for end users are mainly yeah, usability. So the main goal is it's easy to use. You have some, like just like Google, some search box, you can type something in and you get results. And then you have some overview, where are the results coming from, which resources. And also, for example, you are uh, looking for conference, you will then find results, conference com, uh, is occurring in this sentence, in this dictionary or this uh, corpus. So you will know which resources you can maybe take a deeper look at. And that's also the point, um, if you want more details or more expert search options, then you have some backlinks to the actual endpoint and resource. Uh, the institutes have some more specialized search interfaces. So what is a yeah, client federated uh, content search? It's basically a federated corpus query platform. That means we have some RESTful protocol, we have query languages and data formats. We have some central data aggregator and web portal doing for the search, and we have a complete software ecosystem. But one point to note is the FCS has not the goal or aim to be a complete replacement for local search engines. So the infrastructure looks like this. We have clients on top with the aggregator as a primary client that aggregates, yeah, the distributed search results. Then we have the endpoints that are the translation layer between the query from the client to the local search engines. That can be MySQL, uh, some XML databases, Elasticsearch, or so on. And the query is translated from the common format to the local search formats. And the results are also uh, translated from the special structures back into some common shared formats that can then be interpreted by the clients. But note that the data is still on the um, yeah, institution side. 
So the protocol also sets on standards like uh, search retrieval via URL from the Library of Congress, search retrieved by OASIS, and data is encoded by XML. And it's trustful, so we have two operations, explain, which is listing of resources, which languages are there, which annotations, which data formats are supported, as well as in search retrieve, which is just the query. And besides the mandatory full text search, we have some specialized Corpus query languages, FCSQL. But we have one assumption of the data structure. We have a full text layer and then annotation layers on top that are optional. And the FCS specifies those five other types, which, as I said, are optional, but can also be yeah, extended with custom text sets, for example. And with this, you can then, similar to CQP or the NoSketch engine, build some queries uh, with some visual query builder and search about uh, over the multiple annotation layers. This will then give results like the keyword in context, where you see the search query um, from the slide before is in this sentences and highlighted. You can also display this as collocation keyword in context view with a central fits column, as well as then some more structured display with uh, the single result and the different annotation layers and the different information. Um, it's also a good choice because there are a lot of existing resources like reference implementations, libraries and documentation, some validators for the endpoints that are being developed, and also an endpoint registry where you can uh, yeah, register yourself so, and then the central aggregator just needs, also knows you and can then carry you. And the actual number of resources in a client uh, um, FCS aggregator, the so actual number fluctuates, but currently those are 20 institutions and 38 endpoints and you know, 11 countries, which is 200 text collections, which are more or less corpora. Um, so can we use the FCS for lexical resources? The answer is more or less no, or not yet, because the uh, focus is more or less on text streams. This means we have text corpora or transcriptions of audio. That means um, we create about the text layer or optional annotation layers. This doesn't really work for lexical resources that are completely different structurally. So wordless probably don't have annotation layers or word nets, key value based information. Those are completely different. So we extend this specification, which is also some strong point of the FCS. Um, our goals are we want to have some query language for lexical entries. This, or for this resort, we can use a contextual query language or subsets thereof. Um, then we have some agreement which fields are queryable, which should be supported, and that we want to build uh, more or less complex queries. Then we want to have some common data formats to have some yeah, easy unifi unified uh, result presentation um, with the mandatory lexits data view. This extends the uh, normal hits data view from the FCS with some inline annotations. And an optional being yeah, tabular, uh, advanced tabular representation, which is key value based, but is still work in progress. And the main point is we want to uh, remain compatible with the FCS effect, uh, architecture, so we can reuse features that are existing there and can also integrate new resources there. So there's not a complete split as a new um, yeah, structure, infrastructure. That means um, with the existing slide before, we have the endpoints and then the lexical endpoints will then just be added uh, on the side. In the current draft, um, we have specified the query language named LexSQL for now, data views with Lex hits, uh, where the tabular one is a draft, and we pin this by publishing it on Zenodo. LexSQL, as I said before, is a subset of the contextual query language. Um, that means it's, yeah, 
those that know the SQL, it's really easy to yeah, um, read and also to type. We have the relation um, equals and just the operas and or not. And the recommendation for endpoints is that we want to support uh, or want to have more recall compared to precision. So if you search something like some special form, you still want to have results even if you have some, yeah, not normalized uh, version. So if you search for Läuft in German, you may also want to return results for Laufen or for some base forms for some normalizations. That's especially, um, yeah, makes sense for non-Latin scripts where maybe you don't really have the uh, means to type the special characters. But we also want to support exact results with some modifiers. So if you get too many results, you can always say, no, I want this exact from. And the fields we wanted to support are lemma, so entry name, uh, the post tag information in uh, university dependencies would be uh, definition, which is some description field, and from TI like zero um, landed um, some synonymy, hyponymy, semantic relation fields. And currently still in draft because we are working on how to best do this, some sense references, which can be some yeah, references to senses defined in Wiktionary and Wikidata in some GND, which can then be used to link different results you get to one common sense and maybe aggregate uh, different information types. Then the Lexits data view, it's currently just an extension where we say, if you want to ex uh, annotate the lemma, post or definition field, you can then just specify this and then you have a visual hint on the result that this is a lemma, this is some post information, this is a description. This is basically uh, just uh, to remain compatible to the mandatory hits view where you don't have any annotation, but if you provide something, then you can do this. And yeah, currently we're working on a more complex data view that's intended to be more tabular, key value based. So uh, we want to have some easy conversation from complex, uh, yeah, formats into a more flat general structure. That means we have different entries with some name and then values. And yeah, this still requires some recommendations, which information types are required or which are optional. And also the normative lists, which keys are being used, which are the field types, which are the ranges of options you can then use. For example, if you have POS, then you may want to know that it's just um, UD17, but you can may also want to use some yeah, custom text sets, which should then also be supported. And yeah, the standard attributes being used uh, in the LexSQL, but maybe we we'll also want to return examples. For example, um, the lemma is being used in the sentences. We want base forms, maybe hyphenation, maybe some decomposition for German compound nodes co-occurrence information or frequency uh, information, maybe also provenience or word history etymology, uh, etymology. So yeah, where are we at? We published the first draft. So users uh, can try to implement this. We have the query language and its data view defined. We have some demo implementations. Uh, a fork of the aggregator for business extensions included. So endpoints can then test this as well as some first endpoints uh, being developed in text plus. This also means we currently have 50 resources from six institutions, which include two data domains and yeah, the third data, data domain is being worked on. And we are still planning to yeah, provide some implementation guide some tutorial, some yeah, finish specifying the typical key value based data view and some endpoint tester to test the different uh, yeah, query languages. So yeah, thank you for your attention.
And if you want to try it out, it's already possible. We have sources and specification. And otherwise, we are still here. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, for this uh, wonderful presentation. Very useful, and also we are perfectly in time, yep. which Hello. means uh, on the second uh, <laughs> worst precision. Um, are there any questions? We are a small audience, so you can ask the questions you would always have liked to ask. <laughs> if there's no immediate one, I have one. Suppose you um, have a user query uh, which is uh, more, which is um, quite not, not very complex, but quite complex. And suppose on the other hand, the resources the, that you query are um, they don't have the information that is required by the query, mm -hmm. so it's underspecified, so to say, with respect to the query. Um, what would the system do in this case? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, this mostly depends on how the endpoint is being developed. So this is still in yeah, control of the endpoint developer who can then have, uh, yeah, return some diagnostics that says um, we can not return results to this specific query, but we can return more general results. Or they provide some diagnostics that says uh, for this query we can't provide or we can't pass this query because it uh, specifies fields that we don't have in our resources. And this is then being presented in the user interface as some warning messages. Yes, Wolf, please. <laughs> Do you measure if um, people click on certain resources so that you can have the uh, collaborating um, uh, resource providers? Um, useful we have them. some simple statistics or even about general response time and when errors occur, but those are not currently aggregated over longer times. This is something that's being worked on and even planned by me, but yeah, this would be good feedback uh, to the endpoints to whether they can't handle specific query types or there's some common errors or even just to know which resources are being yeah used. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, could this be easily extended to other Clarin type resources or is it very specific to the ones that you've uh, used so far? Well, the Clarin FCS is intended for all text resources like Hopora and just says we have some mandatory full text search and then the optional more complex layer based search. So. There are some reference implementation how to uh, yeah, add your corpus to this search. But yeah, I'm also working on providing more examples and better tutorials because yeah, documentation was good, but those tutorials were still lacking. And yeah, you can always participate. And our goal with this presentation was mainly that we want to uh, include lexical resources because full text search doesn't really make sense if you just want to look for some word, the lemma. Um, you often don't have a lot of context in word lists, so you want to have something that supports this too, mm. but still can be included uh, in the yeah, client FCS. Okay, <laughs> what he said. Huh? Uh, in addition, perhaps you, you, you have uh, stated before that uh, it's an international, that they, at least for the collections, mm -hmm. that you have 38, I've written it down, yes, 20 institutions in 38 endpoints in 11 countries. Yep. Uh, so it clearly says it's not a national um, thing, but international, but perhaps you could say something about the countries who participate, all the Clarion countries? Yeah, yeah, it's mostly the Clarion countries because it's, it started with the Clarion project mm -hmm. 10 years ago and then Clarion Eric, Daria, and mm -hmm. those are listed in the yeah, Clarion Endpoint Center registry. And those are mostly, yeah, Netherlands, some Finnish ones, German ones. 
it would be interesting to add more new ones, but there are some publicity works still required to, yeah, get it more visibility for others. So you see you know, there are so many other institutions where you can find the, well, this compatible way mm -hmm. of implementing it. Okay, I think, yes, we are perfect in time. We have five minutes for changing room. Thank you again, Eric. Thank you.